style openers, Andrade's big surprise, Brock Anderson's debut, and a really fun main event as we talk about one of the last Friday Night Dynamites. We made it to the end. We have one more Saturday next week, and then we're back to Wednesdays. Welcome to a brand new episode of Kimmy Talks Wrestling, where we talk about last night's AEW Dynamite, and we are starting. with this opener so if you have watched any podcast panel I've been on or if you follow me on my own channel you know that this MMA UFC style and myself do not clash at all I hate it I absolutely hate it so when I saw that this was starting dynamite I was not the most happiest person in the world so a lot of people didn't like this and I do admit it was different I appreciate AEW being different, but the MMA style is not for everybody. I felt like this didn't need that stipulation. You could have done another one-on-one -on -one match. We've only seen it one other time. Or if you wanted a cage, you could have done a steel cage. We've only seen that one other time as well. And you could have really carried the story of like, you know, Wardlow already lost inside of a cage. Technically, well, he's one and one if you're gonna count pulling guts. But in a regular steel cage, he's 0-1. But it only went two rounds. Wardlow tapped out. Then Spears attacked Hager. Then Jericho got involved. Then MJF was there. Then MJF attacked Dean Malenko. So in a week, we have seen Ted DiBiase and Dean Malenko take bumps. It, we have clearly went back to the 80s and 90s, folks. Okay, I, I could deal with that. Um, then Guevara makes a save, which sets up for June 30th. It's going to be MJF versus Sammy Guevara, which would be really good, and I'm really excited for that. But this is not the way you should start Dynamite. Um, um, I do realize that you aren't trying to put your best matches forward just because you're on Friday and you're waiting for that Wednesday shift. But th this was really bad. <laughs> like, mm. But it picked up because we had a debut because it was Aaron Solo and QD Marshall versus Cody Rhodes and the debuting Brock Anderson who looks just like Arn Anderson. It's kind of scary. This match was so good. I am so impressed with Brock. He literally like, he sells well. He has transitioned to really well. He's really smooth in the ring. Obviously he's still working and there's still things he needs to improve on. But this was a great showing. He got the pin on Aaron Solo. This was just so good, and I want to see more of him. I was like, wow, I like this. Arn must have been super proud. He was there at ringside, watching his son debut on TNT, but th this was really good. I mean, I'm still waiting for this feud to end, but like, huh. I, I mean, July 7th, right? Road Rager has to end at Road Rager with the strap match. We also saw Arch Cassie and Cesar Bononi, so that was funny because toward so Arch Cassie won. There was a lot of shenanigans here because you know the best friends were there and Peter Avalon and Nick Nemeth and his crew was out there. And it was really funny because at the end when Arch Cassie won and Caesar was like sitting there and Peter was like crying like a baby. I'm like that's the newest meme for AEW. That was great. I love that. Um, one of the other cool things that we had too was Jungle Boy and Kenny Omega were like doing a promo so they were trying to interview Jungle Boy and Jungle Boy was saying how excited he was for the match and then Kenny and Don interrupted and saying like oh you can't even get a punch on us and so they went to like suck, Jungle Boy went to sucker punch Kenny and then Nakazawa beat like Jungle Boy up and they like almost forgot Nakazawa on the golf cart which was kind of funny so that was cool too. That's a match I'm really excited for um, and because I'm working next week the videos are gonna be late because I can't watch it till like probably Sunday, so sorry. Sad face. Um, Andrade. That's what we need to talk about because Andrade had a sit down interview with JR. 
talking about how he's so excited to come to AEW, that there's so many stars here, so many good talent, and he's a superstar himself and he's ready to prove himself, but also said that him and Vicky have a huge surprise, and I think it's her, I think it's Zelina, and we all know if Zelina is coming, that means Aleister Black is coming too, when his 90 days are up, and that really excites me, and we're gonna have Andrade and Zelina back together on my screen, and holy crap, like, my NXT heart will be complete. That's so exciting. And she also tweeted. She was like, hmm, I wonder what that means. Huge surprise. So, and if it's not her, I really don't know who else it would be. So I really hope it is. But AEW likes surprising us with things. So we shall see. And that main event. So we had, we had Penta. We had Kazarian. And we had Eddie Kingston versus the Good Brothers and Matt Jackson. And this was just fun. It was a nice way to end Dynamite when Dynamite's been kind of rocky today. Um, there was a couple cool spots here. Obviously, the Good Brothers and Matt won with the help of a one and only Nick Jackson who sprayed Kazarian with a cool spray and got the win. But it was really good. Like I said, nice way to end an okay episode of Dynamite. And I don't think I missed anything that important. Yeah. So again, that's it for me. Tune in Monday for our Hell in a Cell review, which would be rather interesting, being that the paper is not that good.